wonderful world of Disney. One, remember that the place of our story is the historic island of Ceylon. Here, in the ruins of an old Dutch fort, a mother leopard gave birth to two cubs. The black male was to be called Chanda. Together with his sister, Chanda enjoyed a happy, adventurous cubhood. One of his jungle escapades, Chanda was rescued from a watery dilemma by a wise and holy man named Sumana. What kind of fish are you? Is that so? A leopard, you say? Well, in that case, you belong here on the ground, not in the water, my little one. The paths of the man and leopard were destined to cross again. Months passed and Chanda grew towards his adulthood. A magnificent animal, he had yet to reach his full maturity. The leopard still traveled and hunted as a family group. Then a fire broke out in the jungle and the family was separated. Chanda would never see his mother and sister again. Still unschooled in hunting for himself, he soon learned that alligators are not on a leopard's bill of fare. He was even more outmatched by a herd of water buffalo. Into Chanda's life came a small boy named Dasa. As part of Dasa's education, his father put him in the care of Sumana. The boy would make a summer long pilgrimage with the holy man and learn the wisdom and philosophy of Buddha. A strange bond was formed between the boy and the leopard. Chanda followed the pilgrims wherever they went to sacred shrines and holy places and long deserted cities of the past. Traveling through the jungle, the leopard and the boy were caught in the path of a wild elephant drive. Frightened by the oncoming herd, Chanda was cornered in the elephant crawl. Dasa, fleeing in blind panic, was driven into the same deadly trap. Fighting for his own survival, the leopard stood off the attack of an enraged elephant. And so inadvertently saved the life of the boy. Dasa was convinced that the leopard had deliberately protected him. But for his reward, Chanda was trapped and sold to an animal dealer. Saddened by the sight of his friend in captivity, Dasa felt he owed the leopard a debt he could never repay. Now Chanda's travels began again, but in the cramped confines of a cave. His savage strength was captive now. But his rage was boundless. It was a long journey, and with every mile, the leopard's fury and frustration grew. The animal dealer was pleased with his bargain. The black leopard was very rare. destination was the little village where he was to meet a traveling circus. Months ago, the circus manager had placed a standing order for the first leopard available. Wow. Wow. 
The dealer and Chanda had no trouble convincing the circus men that here was a wild animal that would give the customers their money's worth. And so the dealer realized his profit, and Chanda exchanged his bamboo cage for one of steel. Tagala the trainer was neither cruel nor kind. But of all the wild cats, leopards are the most dangerous to train. And to train Chanda, he must first teach him obedience. <laughs> It would take weeks, but Chanda would learn to perform. And that night, while the circus slept, Chanda listened to the voices of the nearby jungle. He smelled a jungle scents and a light night breeze, and he was filled with longing and anger. Tagala was pleased with the leopard's courage. A little defiance made for good showmanship. The circus never stayed long in one place, but kept moving from village to village. And because Ceylon is a small country, it was not surprising that in one village, the leopard and the boy Dasa eventually met again. As usual, the pilgrims relied on pious strangers for their few needs, including food. small or simple a meal was, loving kindness prompted them to share it, this time with a pet monkey. All Dasa could see was a crowd gathering. He soon found out why. The artist hadn't looked close enough to count them. Normally, Dasa would have been fascinated by a snake charmer's performance. But today his mind was on the leopard that had saved his life. Could it be that? No, no, it just wasn't possible. It would be fun, though, going to the circus. But how to bring up the subject? Dasa could not bring his thoughts to matters of faith or wisdom. Fortunately, Sumana's wisdom included a profound understanding of his young disciple. He knew Dasa's father had given him a few coins just for emergencies, and due consideration convinced him that this was, in fact, an emergency. Marco 
Joe the juggler. Hurry! Come on in, son. Go right inside. Dasa had never been to a circus before, and like the villagers, he was soon under the spell of Circus Pacifia. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the capital city of Colombo, it is my pleasure to introduce to you the one and only Adam Galois! It wasn't much of a circus, but to Dasa it was everything a circus should be. Amusing, amazing, and in all ways exciting. For a little while, he almost forgot why he was here. I was sure that if this was his leopard, his heart would tell him. There was no possible doubt. This was Dasa's leopard, and he obviously hated captivity and all that went with it. How could he have thought Chanda might be happy? He was a rebellious prisoner, forced to perform tricks like a trained dog. Dasa was in no mood for more entertainment. He was sick at heart. But what could he do? Outside, Dasa heard a familiar voice. Still without a plan, he followed the sound. The leopard's angry growls weren't directed at the boy. They were only the rumble of his restless frustration. Then Dasa noticed that the catch securing the cage door was easily opened. He could repay his debt to Chanda after all. Dasa knew that he was turning loose a dangerous wild animal. There could be serious consequences, but it was a chance he felt he must take. The boy was well away before Chanda realized that he was no longer a captive. Cody! Ah! Cody! Cody! Startled by the man's outcry, Chanda chose the nearest hiding place. a great lift of spirit. Beyond the first fringe of trees lay his birthright. 
the freedom of the jungle. What is it, Dasa? Just a call of leopard. So it was. Master? Does I let him escape? He was the leopard who saved me. I know it was. I believe you, my son. And I will pay the owner back. Even if I work all year. That would help to make amends. Was I wrong? It is not wrong to help one who suffers. That is the humanitarian point of view. But the circus owner is only a small businessman. From his point of view, you may have caused him much unhappiness. There are no perfect answers, Dasa. We can only judge for ourselves. Go to sleep now. We have a long climb before the sun rises. If I were the animal trainer, caged with a fierce and defiant leopard, I might have still another point of view. Adam's Peak, a much revered and holy place, rises 7,300 feet above sea level. For Sumana, it was a very difficult climb. To watch the sun rise from the summit of the holy mountain, hundreds of thousands of pilgrims make the steep ascent each year. Here they are on holy ground, for it is said that the Buddha himself once stood here and left the imprint of his foot in a rock. the last traditional act of every pilgrim. It marked the number of times he had visited here. The rock of Sigiria is a stupendous mass of granite 600 feet high, rising to the north of Adam's Peak. It is a place of historical interest, but not a part of the pilgrimage. In a pocket in the rock, they saw the renowned Sigiria frescoes, a total of 22 figures painted by an unknown artist 15 centuries ago. On the summit of the rock, a fortress once stood, built by a king who had murdered his father. Here, he and his army long held out against the siege of a vengeful brother. It was an interesting story, but Dasa's thoughts were with Chanta. Where was his friend? How was he faring? There was no need for Dasa's concern. Chanda had thrived. His instinct to avoid all men was stronger than ever. Yet even now, fate was beginning to weave another net of circumstances in which he would soon be entangled. Inevitably, the wandering life of the bachelor leopard sometimes brought him close to human settlements. Rice paddies like these were a warning to hurry on. One of those oxen would provide many good meals. But the presence of the man and past experience warned Chanda he must not attach. The ox cart driver's fate, however, was already interwoven with Chanda's. For just down the road, another pair of eyes was watching. Wow. 
The nearest police station got the news by mid-morning. A farmer had discovered the body of the ox cart driver, and it was clear to the captain in charge that a man killing leopard was in the area. There was no time to waste. No one in the surrounding farmlands would be safe until the man killer was hunted down. <laughs> On a high plateau, there's a rolling grassy expanse called Horton's Plains. And it was here that Trance brought Chanda in search of prey. He soon found it. That same day, there was another predator on Horton's Plains. If another did the work, the man-killer was always ready to claim the game. However, this time looked like the wrong time to try. Since there had been no witnesses to the tragedy, the police couldn't know that their quarry was a spotted leopard. And since leopards aren't exactly common, even in Ceylon, the hunters would naturally assume that the first leopard they saw would be the man-killer. For the first time in his life, Chanda was up against a skillful and tireless enemy. He couldn't outrun a jeep indefinitely, much less rifle bullets. One ending, unless Chandar found a way to escape. He found instead the 5,000 foot cliff called the World's End. over the edge and the policeman was satisfied. No living thing could survive such a drop. They could go back to the village now, secure in the belief that the man-killer was dead. But of course the man-killer was not dead, and neither was Chanda. However, for a leopard with a habit of falling out of trees, he was in considerable difficulty. Now he saw an opportunity to move laterally across the face of the drop. Since every leap could be his last, he would choose his way with caution. The long descent seemed endless. Chanda was still on the cliff when storm clouds rolled in. He found some shelter against the rain, but it would be a long, cold, hungry night. By morning, the storm had passed. Refreshed, Chanda resumed his descent. Chanda 
now found himself in unfamiliar territory. For the first time, he encountered a full-grown wild boar. He wasn't quite sure whether this was prey or something that might prey on him. In the end, it seemed a good idea not to argue about it. Then came a day of great events. It began with a small happening. To the competent cat, this looked like an easy meal. refuge in the treetops was instinctive for the monkey. Against Chanda, it was a perfect defense. For in a tree, he was always in trouble. The monkey's quick move turned the trick. It broke Chanda's concentration on his balancing act, with the usual result. The splash of Chanda's unexpected dip reached the ears of a young female leopard named Mahal. And since Chanda was clearly in a bad mood, precaution dictated that she fade discreetly from the scene. Ruffled by his undignified downfall, Chanda was looking for a quiet place to calm his nerves and settle his temper. <laughs> Mahal was wending her cautious way back to the river when she became aware that the other leopard just happened to be a male leopard and very handsome. In typical female fashion, she pretended to ignore him. Then he saw her. That ended the preliminaries. And so the courtship began. In one wild romp of happy companionship. leopards were fast approaching their maturity. They would soon mate. But now, for a little while, they would be content to travel and hunt together. They could not share their hunting law. What one leopard knew, the other often didn't. about monitor lizards. They were legitimate prey, if you were hungry enough. But to Chanda, this was a totally strange creature. Since Mahal was watching, though, he just had to prove that he knew everything about hunting, anything. But all he proved was that monitor lizards weren't easily impressed. As part of their defense, they give off a rather unpleasant odor. And in the end, Chanda decided he just wasn't that hungry. 
So the lizard that bested a leopard headed for home with honors and a bit of a swagger. In their wanderings, the young leopards came to the kind of jungle that Chanda knew best. Now it was time for Mahal to make a few discoveries. She had yet to learn about water buffalo. To her, they looked like slow-moving, easy prey. Well, this was a lesson Chanda had learned long ago. Mahal would just have to find out for herself. A charging leopard expects to cause panic and flight in its quarry. Anything but this. same web. The pilgrims were miles away, bringing an offering of flowers to a tree. No ordinary tree. This one had been grown from a slip, taken from the original bow tree under which the Buddha had received his enlightenment. Then they traveled south. Their pilgrimage was drawing to a close when they reached Kandy, just in time for the climax of the Perahera. Here at last was something Gata knew all about. All his life, he'd been hearing of the marvels of the five joint temple processions called the Asala Dalada Perahera. Now, for the first time, he was seeing it for himself. the center elephant, the tooth of the Buddha, recovered from the ashes of his funeral pyre. With the coming of night, the procession continued. He wasn't going to admit it. There was so much to see, and he was determined not to miss anything. Sheer determination, apparently, just wasn't enough to keep Dasa awake. Meanwhile, another part of the jungle drama was about to unfold. Chanda saw him first, the man-killer leopard. It was now the mating season, and the man-killer wanted Mahal. He was spoiling for a fight, and he was the elder of the two. Experienced, mean, and cunning. But perhaps the man killer had preyed on men too long. He knew when he was beaten. And so Chanda established his right to Mahal. He was undoubted king in his own jungle. A 
And yet now, wherever they roamed, the man-killer was never far away. He would bide his time and take his revenge. Almost inevitably, they came at last to the familiar waterhole of his youth. Here would be a good place to raise their own cubs. Basking in this half-remembered place, Chanda was happy. Mahal caught the peaceful spirit too, even to the point of sharing it with humans. For Dasa and Sumana were also here at the end of their journey. You want, I could come and visit you often. No, my son. You must learn how to go your own way now. I have guided you long enough. I shall miss you. You must think of your family now. Yes, but I'm very sad to leave you. Listening to the boy's song, Sumana knew he wouldn't be sad for long. Tomorrow, his father would be coming to take him home. Sumana himself would stay here, spending the rest of his days as a holy hermit. Not far from the water hole, the man-killer was hunting. The spotted deer, he dismissed impatiently. For a hungry predator, the leopard's behavior was highly unusual. He didn't seem to care what game he scared off. The pelican saw him coming and wisely sought refuge elsewhere. He even ignored a family of wild pig. Slender lorises watched wide-eyed, but the leopard never noticed them. And disregarded the inquisitive mongoose, too. He was looking for easier prey. His arrival had ended the man-killer's game. Fortunately, his intended victim would recover. Next morning, paw prints left by the man-killer were quickly spotted by the police and their trackers. Skill and cunning had enabled the man-killer to survive many such hunts. deep into entangled jungle. But another party of police and trackers were already combing it. He was going to have to be doubly careful. he found himself cut off by the first group. He must change direction again. With hunters 
closing in from both sides, there was only one path of retreat left, toward the water hole. Something to reflect upon. And that is certain. Come. Dasa was convinced that his leopard had followed him. For what purpose he didn't know. But with luck he would see him one more time. Sumana was baffled by the strength of the bond that seemed to exist between the boy and the leopard. In all his years in the jungle, he had never seen anything like it. Killer had reckoned without his hated rival, Chanda. <laughs> Fully as concerned, another watcher had moved to the jungle's edge. Now Mahal emerged from her hiding place, eager to join her victorious mate. Oh, he's hurt. No, let him go, Daza. Let him go. See, he has a mate now to look after him. You have given him the greatest gift, and now he has returned it. What is that? Life, my son. He has given you new life, just as you gave him. It's a miracle in a way. But then all life is a miracle. You must always remember that. Come, let's go. I managed to explain to the incredulous hunters that they were making a mistake. And Sumana added a holy man's authority to the story. Even so, they had to see for themselves. There indeed was the leopard. The pilgrims said it had been a killer of men and that they had almost fallen victim too. So the hunter's job was done. As all things must, the summer's pilgrimage had come to an end. And now Dasa's father had come to claim his son again. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Dasa. Goodbye, thank you. We 
we'll meet again. There are no endings, only beginnings, my son. Of course, a proper expression of thanks must be made to the teacher. But in the hearts of these two, there were those emotions that could not be expressed. much to fill his days, though. Contemplation, a few simple chores. He was definitely too old for another pilgrimage like the last one. But he wouldn't lack for company. Chanda would be there, and so would Mahal, his mate. What had begun long ago at the same waterhole had borne its fruit. Now each had found what he wanted, a time of peace at the end of a long summer's journey. Mm -hmm.